go to BigManComics.com for the best in action, adventure, entertainment. Hey guys, Gabe El Taib here with another expert opinion. Why an expert? Oh, I don't know, 25 years as an award-winning writer, artist, colorist, illustrator, and everything for the big companies, Marvel, DC Comics, Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Star Wars. If you have heard of it, I have worked on it. There's a lot of opinions out there. Most of them are not experts, so you are welcome. Guys, how would I fix DC Comics? Now, many of you know DC Comics is near and dear to my heart. It is it is very upsetting. It's very heartbreaking what's going on with them and what has been going on with them for a while. But it, it isn't just them. I'm not going to pick on them and single them out. It is the whole of the entertainment industry. What is going on with this? How would I fix DC Comics? Guys, how would we get back what we love, what they took from us, what they've destroyed? Um, how would we get it back? Okay, I mean, we have... I chose this image for a reason. Classic George Perez. Classic representation of awesome Marvel and DC heroes. How do we get back here? Because when you look at it now, it's it's unrecognizable what's going on. There's some good stuff being made. There is. There's good stuff being made in the mainstream. Uh, Marvel, DC, uh, IDW has some great Ninja Turtle stuff. Um, over at Skybound at Image, that's uh, Daniel Warren Johnson is just killing it on Transformers. I heard the new G.I. Joe is good. I haven't been to a comic book shop in years, guys. I don't buy comics. I probably haven't bought them in five or six years. And I bought them every week from the time I was 13 until about you know, five years ago. And uh, it just fell off for me. I just don't care anymore about it. There's just not, they don't make them for me anymore. And I think they've really driven away their core audience, you guys, me, uh, in favor of ideology. And we're going to just get into story and how story works. We all love story. There's nothing we all love more than a great book, a great movie, a great comic, anything with story. And it's not comic books themselves that can't compete in the digital age because we all see Manga is doing just fine, right? All that Berserker, One Piece, all those things, they do good. And, and they do what we, what I call, what, what normal people everywhere call, normal storytelling. I made a handy-dandy chart for you right here. Let's, uh, let's take a quick look and analyze what normal storytelling is. We have a company. We have cool characters. And we have you, the fans. Look at you with your glasses and your smile there. You're reading some big comic book. And, uh, and then bad. We got bad on the other side. Evil, bad, terrible. And the good is against the evil. That's how the story is written, guys. It's very clear whose side everyone is on. Now, you inject cultural Marxism, DEI, feminism, all the stuff we hate, right? All the leftist um, SJW nonsense. And this is how leftists write stories. You have the company. You have the characters. And then you, the fans, are on the side of evil. Yes, as the DC Comics editor Andy Curry said, you grew up to be the kind of people that Batman would hate. He literally tweeted that out. And I'm going to pop an image of that right over here in a second. I'm going to go find it on Twitter, on Image Search, after I record this. And uh, he literally said that. And this is the, the whole communist manifesto, or the, the point of communism, Marxism, and it's all the same thing, socialism. You get these people that like to be pedantic and pretend, it's different, it's all authoritarian narcissism. The point of it is to critique everything. And critiquing everything is nothing but narcissistic entitlement and resentment. We get it, leftists. You hate your dad and you want to destroy his world. We get it. We get it. You hate successful, beautiful things and successful, beautiful people because you're not. And you'd like to see them fail better than you'd like to succeed. So how, how do we get back to this, though? Because this is the difference. Again, let's, uh, let's do my quick scientific analysis Normal storytelling, Lord of the Rings, classic Indiana Jones, classic Star Wars, modern DEI leftist storytelling. This is the difference. This is why you don't like it. This is like, look at the Joker, folia du, or folia du, I don't know. I took French in high school, but uh, I don't know. Joker, Woker, the sequel, look at it, right? And there's headlines saying, allegedly, the director's like, this is an F you to the people who liked it for the wrong reasons to the right-wing chuds who liked the first uh, Joker. And the problem the DEI leftist SJWs have with the first Joker movie is that it spoke up for men. It said men are allowed to say they don't like things, to say the system has been unfair and abusive to them. And the modern feminist DEI leftist SJW, communist, all that stuff, we'll just call it SJW. I'll just shorten that up. The modern SJW worldview is that men are nothing but a footstool. You're here to work, provide, pay taxes, and die, and shut up and thank them the whole time they put their boot on your neck. 
That's what you're here for, men, to be ridiculed, humiliated, everything you like destroyed because they hate you with a passion. They hate men. They hate masculinity. They hate everything about it. I mean, look at the, uh, look at the presidential election. That Tim Walls guy, oh boy. Um, they're trying to appeal to men. He's out there pheasant hunting. He, he couldn't load a shotgun to save his life in that video. And they hate men. They hate everything about men. And again, this comes from the family being destroyed. There's a broken heart when you don't have a father or you have a weak father, absentee, deadbeat father, and you grow up and you resent men and you have daddy issues, men and women. And this is what leads to this leftist stuff. It really is. It's the destruction of the family. There's a, a direct correlation between the destruction of the family, no-fault divorce starting in the 50s and 60s, and this leftist outgrowth of we hate dad and everything he ever stood for, let's burn it down. You see uh, that one guy that... Uh, he was at, I think, that Sweet Baby Incorporated video game social justice warrior consulting company. And in his bio, it was like, burn the video game industry to the ground. What the hell? Why would you want to destroy something that you passionately wanted to work at? You know, as much as DC Comics pissed me off and I left, I didn't want to do anything to the company. I just said, I'm not helping you guys do this. I'm out of here. I'm going to go do my own thing. I'm going to go make my own stuff that's going to be better than yours. And I'm going to just outcompete you. And I'm going to take your sales, I'm going to take your customers, take your backers, because I'm going to make better stuff that entertains them. I'm going to make stuff, and I do make stuff, uh, like this. I'm going to make stuff like this, guys, where I don't call you one of the bad guys. It's amazing that I do that for you, right? Because this, this is actually enjoyable. This is actually nice when you watch Han Solo in the first Star Wars movies, and you're like, hmm, I want to be like him. He was kind of a scoundrel, but you know what? He had a heart of gold, and he came around and became a hero. That could be like me. I could improve. I could be something. What a great story. Whereas in the new Star Wars, he's a useless, limp, nothing. And he's just watching Lando and the Game of Thrones chick and the, like, the feminist robot. Who's, who's that movie for? All that movie's for is this, to tell you fans everything you liked, everything you think is wrong. And it's evil. And because you are to the right of Mao Tse Sung, you are a fascist, racist, homophobe, blah, 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 all the things. All the things. So these people, they're, they're know-it-alls. They're moral, just like these, they're authoritarian, authoritarian moral scolds. And when you don't agree with them, you must be annihilated figuratively uh, for now. <laughs> but we all see how communist revolutions end up. It's quite terrible. But um, yes, it's, it's agree or be annihilated is how it is. And, and I think there's an arrogance with the SJW kind of people of, well, of course I'm right. It's me. I have a college degree and I've always been right about everything. And there's never been any discipline or pushback. And do you know where discipline and pushback come from? They come from dad. And when dad disciplines you and pushes back on your bullshit, it's, a, it's the greatest form of loving you. Because he tells you, hey, don't do that. You're better than that. You have a higher potential than that. That's what dad's sternness, rules, order, and discipline say is, son, you can achieve so much more. You don't have to be a failure. You don't have to be a slob. You don't have to accomplish nothing. But the SJW people, they don't have dads. And if they do, they have very weak dads where the mom is henpecking and all that. And that's why they turn into these man-hating, culture-hating things. Remember, I've commented on this show before. Smash the patriarchy is one of their words. And this is what they do. This kind of stuff right here. This is smashing the patriarchy. Because it's your cultural patrimony, right? This is the culture of your father that will be handed down and taught to you. And patriarchy does not mean rule by men. It means rule by fathers. And fathers love their wives and children and would do and do do anything for them. But when that dad is gone, he's not in the picture, that heartbreak of the neglected child, actually it, it ends up masking itself and turning into rage, raging against your father, raging against everything he built, and that's why they're happy to do this stuff. So if you ever wonder why, well why are they doing that to Dragon Age? Why are they doing that to Star Wars and Lord of the Rings and Game of Thrones? Why is it everything dad made that was, that was like this, everything our fathers and mothers made that was like this, why are they doing this to it? And it's that heartbreak and that resentment. So what is the solution, though? Because we're always talking about this problem, and it, and it is Gabe's unified field theory of fatherlessness. That's what causes all of this. What do we do? We have to, we'll get a, I don't want to get too boring here, but like the government has to incentivize marriage for the millennials and down and even people Gen X, my generation. Uh, not me, thank God I've been blessed. It's too expensive to like own a home and have kids and all that. But we have to use the government in a little bit of a way to incentivize marriage and families. Everything is incentive, right? So we have to incentivize it and make it easier for the younger people to buy a home, have kids, childcare, blah, 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 all that stuff. But they don't want that. 
They want the family destroyed. They want it fractured because a fractured, angry, resentful people are easy to control and manipulate. If you think this stuff is just about Batman or a dragon or a robot or just some entertainment, that's not what this is. Politics is downstream from culture, okay? Politics is downstream from culture and the way you watch this stuff and you absorb it subconsciously, you're gonna vote this way if you believe if you watch it long enough. It's all persuasion. So finally, I'll close on this. I said, how, how would I change DC Comics? What I would do is I would look at the stuff that wasn't performing, which is all the SJW stuff, it does not sell, and I'd eliminate it. And I'd find the people that were pushing that stuff and we would legally get them out for a poor job performance. You know, you gotta follow the law. You cannot just fire someone for their politics or whatever like that. It's actually against California law to fire someone for their politics. But if, if I own a sandwich shop and someone keeps putting staples in the sandwiches, then I'm gonna fire them. And if I own a publishing company and people keep making crap stories that piss off fans and insult them and don't sell, then they have to be fired for poor, poor performance or transferred or demoted or whatever. We, they're, they're not helping the business, right? So we follow the law. We're not, we're not cheaters. We're people who believe in the laws and the morals. But we get the people out of those positions where they are incompetent. There's nothing wrong with that. And there's nothing against the law about that. But if this stuff isn't performing because it's ideologically driven and it doesn't resonate with people as a good story, then we got to do something about the people making it. Guys! Big Man Comics will never, ever put you on the side of evil. Big Man Comics will always put you right here. We've got great books coming. Dean Kane, All-American Lawman, Volume 2. Empyrean, A Space Saga. The Unstoppable Tyrus. Better than anything from Marvel or DC superheroes. And, of course, Jericho Green and the Hammerheads. If you love the Goonies, Stranger Things, the Lost Boys, that kind of teenage, like, adventure with spooky monsters, you're going to love Jericho Green and the Hammerheads. Um, all this stuff is slated to come in 2025. We'll see how it goes. I'm not promising any dates. But Empyrean is almost done. Dean Kane is going to, we're going to start drawing that and Tyrus very soon. And it's all looking great. Go to bigmancomics.com. Get yourself one of the very last copies of a signed edition of Dean Kane All-American Lawman. And there's also unsigned, but there's not many left of this first printing. When they're gone, they're gone forever. Guys, follow me on X. I'm Big Man Comics on X. And I am Gabe El Tabe everywhere else on social media. Hit the like, subscribe, and I will talk to you guys later. Thank you for watching. Make sure to follow us on social media and go to bigmancomics.com.